Hola! Mr. Wara here! Hola! I don't know why I say it. That is so much fun. Hey, it's math time! It is, it's math time, and what are we looking at today, Mr. Wara? Great question, I'm glad you asked. We are looking at fraction and whole number multiplication. Ooh, that sounds like fun. And you know what? I bet it's going to be. This is going to be really cool because this isn't just multiplying. We're moving into a whole nother level, my friends. We're dealing with fractions and decimals. You are the upper grade students now. The essential question in this lesson says, how can you find the product of a fraction okay, and whole number without using a model? Because many of our lessons, we've been using a model. We've been doing both. Cool. You mean there is an actual algorithm? You know what? There is, my friends, and you're going to be excited about more about it. Let's move this up here. It says, Charlene, we're going to unlock the problem. Remember, this is a real world. It applies to the real world as opposed to the fake world, right? <laughs> Anyways, it says, Charlene has five one-pound bags of sand, each a different color. For an art project, she will use three-eighths pound of each bag of sand to create a colorful sand art jar. How much sand will be in Charlene's sand art jar? Very cool. I've never made one of those. That sounds pretty neat. It says how much sand is in each bag. Well, the problem clearly states that. It says that there's one pound. So I'm going to put one. And I'm going to use the abbreviation for pound, which is just LB. And we'll put that little period. And then it says, will Charlene use all of the sand in each bag? Explain. Well, I recall the problem says she will use 3 eighths pound of each bag. That doesn't sound all of it. If she used all of it, it would be 8 eighths. So I'm going to say, no, she's not. She only plans, she only plans to use 3 eighths. And then I'm going to use my symbol again, pound. Okay, so you only use the plan, so you only plans to use three eighths. Now again, look at our benchmark fraction. That always kind of helps us. We can see that it's almost half, so it's a little bit less than half. I do this to get an estimate, uh, get an estimation of how much I'm talking about. Real important to do that. Okay, let's see. Here we have. Um, it says write an expression to represent the problem. So it says five times three eighths. Now it says think. I need to find five groups of eighth size pieces, which is looks like it's been done here uh, here by putting these right here. I, I placed these here already. So you see, see there's three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. So you need to shade that in because that rem represents the three eighths of each bag of sand. And that's what we're needing to think here. So multiply the number of eighth size pieces in each hole by five. Okay, then write the answer as the total number of eighth size pieces. That means what we're going to have here is we're going to have our, our five, because that's how many bags there are, and we're going to multiply that by the three eighths, which is what's up here. Or this can also be said as five times uh, three eighths, because that's how, the units that we're using here. Well, five times three is 15, and of course the eight is just we bring over because really eight, we can always put in an invisible one. Eight times one does equal eight. Now it says rearrange the shaded pieces to fill as many holes as possible. All right. So if we did this, I'm going to have some fun now. I can do this here. Three, six. Ooh, I'm getting a lot of these here. Just kind of fill them up. Now I need two. So we'll put one, two. It looks like we have room for one more. So what I did was I took those three that were here, and I just put those three there. <clears throat> and now it says rearrange the shaded pieces to fill as many holes as possible. It looks like to me that I have, let me see here. Uh, we'll choose green. It looks like we have eight eighths here, so that's one hole. And then it looks like we have seven eighths over here. Now it says write the answer as a mixed number in simplest form. Well, let's see if we're coming up with the same number here. So here, um, first of all, we have our 15 eighths, and that's equal to, you can see we can make one hole, but we can't make a second one almost, because eight eighths would equal one hole, and that leaves seven left over, and then with our denominator, remember, we just bring it over, okay, because that's the unit that we're using, and look at that. Is that beautiful? Yes, my friends. Talk about my art sand jar. There it is. Oh, one more question. So, 
there are blank pounds of sand, so we now we know it's one, and seven eighths because that's less than one. We have to say and. All right, I do like it. Tell me I like it. I love it. Okay, Ooh, it's a little bit more clear. There we go. So let's look at our model here. It says shade the model to show two thirds of four. It says think. I can cut the loaves into thirds and show two thirds of them being used. So I'm going to actually get a line here. I think this is going to be my ticket to fame here. What I'm going to do is, can I do a line all the way through? See how I'm just kind of splitting this into thirds like that? And I know I've gone through the figures, but you get the idea. Okay. So now I can actually shade. This is when I rarely ever use this, but I will this time. I'm going to use my coloring crayon, right? Cool. Woohoo! Mr. War likes to color. Yes, I do. I'm not going to lie. I have like a Spider Man coloring book. And no, just kidding. So here we have two thirds. I show two thirds of each loaf. So I've done that all the way. Nice. I don't know if I should be going on left, right, left, right. I guess this is something over here. And I'm confused. Okay. So rearrange the shaded pieces to fill in as many holes as possible. So if we have two thirds here, this is the way I'm going to see this. I'm going to um, see if I can make a copy of that. So that's two thirds right there. So that would kind of go here. We have one spot open, of course. And then let me see what's going to happen on this one. This one is I have two. Okay. So we still have thirds open there. And then we have this bottom one here. Is it going to? There we go. Now with this one here. I'm going to see if I can't break up into pieces. It worked. Oh, my goodness. I am telling you. Then you take this one here and then this one here. See how I kind of did that? So I have two, four, six, eight. Is that true? One, two. And then I have three, six, eight. I hope you can see. Let's take a look here. That I actually have three, six, nine. I have 12, okay, total little units of 12 thirds. Okay, let's call for what it is. 12 thirds. That's what we have. And... So I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've filled in eight thirds. You can kind of do the math. What we get left, 12 thirds minus eight thirds is going to leave four thirds. And of course, four thirds is equal to one and one third. I kind of went ahead and solved the problem here based on that. Let's see what we have over here. Write an expression to represent the problem. Okay, think I need to find two thirds of four. So multiply four by the number of thirds. So we're taking that four. So that's four times two thirds. All right, and this is another way to write this. We're putting that four up there with him. And now we end up with eight thirds. That number does look familiar. And this is right the answer is a mixed number. So if we have eight thirds, we have one hole, we have two holes, we have two with two left over, two and two thirds. Oh, that's how much they used. So this is how much was left, Mr. War figured out. And then this is how much they, they used right here was eight thirds. That was what we, we figured out. So eight thirds or two and two thirds of loaves were used. All right, I was doing this calculation to get me back to my original hole, which was the 4. And that's why I subtracted there. Not to confuse you by all that. So 8 thirds or 2 and 2 thirds of loaves of bread were used. 1 and 1 third loaves was left over that was still there. All right, and let's do this now. Okay, so let's look at this one here. So would we have the same amount of bread if we had four groups of two-thirds of a loaf? Explain. So what this is asking us here is we were trying to find two-thirds of four loaves. And now it's asking us if it was reversed, if we were finding four groups of two-thirds of a loaf. And, you know, the answer would be yes. Okay, we would have the same amount. Because in math, two-thirds of four is the same as saying four of two-thirds. Okay, these are interchangeable. So finding two-thirds of that whole number is the same as finding four of two-thirds, four groups of two-thirds as opposed to two-third kind of groups of four. So it is the same, all right, on that question. So explaining. Uh, now try this. It says find the product, write the product in simplest form. Okay, a couple different ways. I see kind of a method one and a method two here. Uh, so I'm just going to do that. You could do the same. Here it says four times seven eighths. Well, we already learned that that is the same as saying four times seven eighths, okay, together. And there we would have 28 over eight, okay? And to write this in simplest form, 
we would do what we've done before. Find how many holes we'll be able to go into 28, how many complete. So if we have 8 times 3, that works for me. That's 24. That would make 3 holes. Okay, and we'd have 4 left over, and then we would have 8. So it would be 3 and 4 eighths, which is actually the same as you guys know, 3 and at 1 half. Since 4 is half of 8, we can simplify, and that's what it means by writing in simplest form. So that's 3 and a half. Now another way that this could be done, and I'll just put the problem up here so you can see to be consistent, is when we have 4, four times 7 eighths, what we could do is what we could do is we say, I'm going to start to simplify um, by dividing out common factors. So what does that mean? Well, a 4 could really be, let me get my purple again, so this is, say it's consistent. 4 is the same as 4 over 1, okay? And what we could do here is we could say, well, 8 and 4 both have a common factor. The common factor they both have is 4. Well, if I were to divide out a 4 from each number, it would simplify my fraction. So if I took 4 divided by 4, that would leave me with 1. You can barely see that. Let me get another color here. There we go. Red would work better. And then if I divide out a 4 from 8, that would give me 2. Now, if you notice here, um, I'll end up with, in the very end, when all is said and done, I'll end up with 1 times 7, which is 7, over 1 times 2, which is 2. Now, I can simplify. Well, how many uh, halves can I make complete to go into 7? And you can see I have 1, 2, 3. I could make 3 halves. Okay, I shouldn't say 3 halves. I could make 3 holes. I could make 6 halves, all right, go into 7. It's going to leave me with 1 left over, 1 half left over. And now I just carry my 2. And see, it got me to the 3 and a half. So that's the two different ways. I would always try to do that. So this is what I'm going to do over here. I think it's a better method by looking at that right away. So when you look at the 9 and the, the 12, right away you should notice that they both have a common factor of 3. If I were to take out that common factor, that means 9 divided by 3 is 3. If I take out that common factor of 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay? There aren't any others that I can see. Now I can multiply across. I end up with 20 over 3. Now, how many holes can I make? How many thirds I have here? Well, if I take three, I, I think I can go into that number, what, six times, seven times, six times. So I can make six holes of those thirds, all right? And now I have how many left over? Two. And then I have my denominator, which in this case, all I do is bring it over. Okay, that's all I need to do on that one there because I'm talking about thirds, six and two-thirds. So six and two-thirds. My friends, I do believe that comes to an end, our nice little uh, video. I'm going to go ahead and give you some more information like this, possibly. All right. Uh, of course, you'll need that for the completion of the assignment to receive credit. I can't believe it's over. It was so short-lived. We were there. We were having a ball. And then, oh, boy. Sorry. Time to go. Anyway, my friends. Live long and prosper.